So I was married for 10 years. I got married young. I was 21, barely, like three days, 21. Um, already had a baby. He was eight weeks old at our wedding. And I remember feeling like my marriage was temporary from the beginning. Really? For some reason that is yet known by scholars, the modern woman thinks that getting married at 21 is somehow considered too young, but at the same time feel like 17 is old enough to start drinking, partying, and allowing random men to make stains with her in her parents' marital bed. Hate to break it to you toots, but it just doesn't work that way. If you're 21, you're legally an adult and can make your own decisions, especially when it comes to latching on to a man who obviously isn't the father of your child, leeching him for food, money, time, and other resources, but secretly hating him because he wasn't the dude who got to play with your decaying stink chamber of unending despair without any protection. He didn't really start this process. I guess it was it was more so me because I was always looking for someone else because I didn't know how to be loved or how to accept love from somebody. Um, and so while he was fighting for me, I was pushing him away, um, but I, I never truly accepted happiness. I left the good guy. <laughs> what we got here is a little game of show and tell. You don't want to show me nothing, but you tell me everything. Okay, hold the phone, Chatty Kathy. You trapped a man in a loveless marriage and treated him like dirt for 10 years, most likely withholding affection, making mediocre bedroom fun time transactional, and putting this poor bastard who loved you through hell. A man you clearly didn't love, but had no problem mooching off of for 10 years. But somehow, in that clogged up gunk factory you call a brain, you are the victim because you don't know how to accept love? In in no reality does that make sense. What does make sense, however, is that you are a selfish wretch who would rather destroy her family and ruin her children rather than take any responsibility for your crap life choices. I left the guy that everybody looks at and is like, that's a dad, that's a husband, that's how it's supposed to be. He did the dishes, he cleaned the house, he took the kids to school, he worked all day, he made good money, he supported us. Um, I mean, yeah, we had our problems, but it's okay to leave the good guy. Don't stay because he's the good guy. Leave because he's not the guy for you. Leave because you have to be happy. Because if you don't feel in love, then who cares if he's the good guy? And that is a harsh reality that I'm facing right now and a lot of scrutiny from a lot of people. I hated that so much. Wait, didn't you literally just say that you couldn't accept love and you didn't know how to love? Then how the hell could you possibly be in love if you don't know how to accept said love? You claim that you were unhappy even though this simp with a heart of gold worked his ass off to provide for you and your family. And I hate to break it to you, but after you have kids, if those children are being loved, cared for, and protected, then their happiness and security takes precedent over yours. Those kids loved their dad and you strip them away from their father simply because of a feeling that you never understood and for that your ex-husband and your children will forever resent you all because you felt like you had to leave the good guy shame on you and shame on you and shame on your whole ill-mannered town a relationship truly only works when a woman settles for a man that she considers mid I used to talk so much shit about girls who settled and now I hope to become one. Because when a woman does the opposite and falls in real love with someone she's attracted to and who's at her level, it's a disaster. That's when the power dynamic and balance gets thrown off kilter because the man doesn't hold her on a pedestal. So she never has the upper hand. And that makes her feel crazy, delulu, out of control. You're 
You don't know what words mean, do you? As a representative for some men across the universe, I would like to make a point of parliamentary procedure and call a vote. This woman is using the term Delulu while trying to make an argument about modern dating. I immediately called to declare her argument null and void on the basis of immaturity. All in favor say aye and the eyes have it. The only reason why you felt so crazy Delulu out of control as you so eloquently put it was because you were in love with Chad and he just wasn't that into you. So you are so bitter and resentful that Chad wouldn't commit to you because you're nowhere near his level, you inevitably decided that the only logical conclusion that you could conjure was publicly announced to the planet that you're actively going to settle for a guy who you believe is less than you. Great plan. Thank you. He likes your plan, Chief. Because what we're supposed to do as women is just like being receptive. Like allow him to pursue us and chase us like even in a long-term relationship. If you're with a man you're not even really that attracted to, you're gonna do that naturally because you don't give a fuck. But if you're in love, you give so many fucks. These couples you know that have made it work and are together in our modern society have followed this formula. Nice guy who the woman isn't attracted to and who she never considered being with finally wore her the fuck down until she said, ugh, fine, I guess. Because the attractive ones are putting me into a crazy, anxious cycle. And now that woman is bored and sexually unfulfilled, but she's secure. At least she has that. <laughs> Lady, men don't chase. The chase is a pointless game that you invented because you are incapable of internal validation. So you make men go through all of these hoops of fire because of some childish need you have to be desired. And then, for reasons that only make sense in your head, you feel the need for these men to prove that they are worthy of you, but you are under no obligation to show anything to indicate that you are worthy of those men. But let me ask you this, Toots. If the men you have fallen madly in love with weren't going to put up with your crap, what makes you think that the men you've publicly announced that you're going to resent are? You're essentially saying that your slightly below average looks, foul mouth, and complete lack of vocabulary are somehow desirable traits to the men you deem are beneath you. Sorry, woman. No self-respecting man, mid or otherwise, is going to tolerate that kind of behavior. If you're a girl who has done that, good for you. You go, Glen Coco. You did it right. Now you can be done with going on first date after first date with really good looking, dusty boys who are gonna waste your time. Those of us who are actually in love are in so much therapy and holding on by a thread and acting out and posting unhinged TikToks. Your mid king was the move. You're not just wrong, you're stupid. Now wait just a minute. And you're ugly, just like your mom. Wow, you are one bitter, jaded, and resentful little broad. You're just gonna sit there and assume that all women have endured the same amount of damage as you and your crappy life decisions? At no point does the mere thought even occur to you that the couples you see are legitimately content with each other. You are incapable of giving men you've never met the bare minimum amount of respect, and you automatically assume that average Joes are just gonna flock to you for for reasons that only make sense in the abysmal void inside your skull. And you're gonna make pathetic attempts, you're gonna try to flirt with these guys, you're gonna try to get them to take you out on a date, and they're gonna look at you and have only one response. No! No, 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 no! No! No, 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 no! No! Not this f***ing time! No f***ing way! No f***ing way! No f***ing way! No f***ing way! What is the craziest thing you've ever done to get a guy to like you? to get really close to his mom, because I worked once upon a time with a lady, and then her son was just the, the man I wanted, you really? feel me? Ah, uh, it's nothing to be proud of, Rusty. 
Okay, so instead of just striking up a natural conversation with this guy and seeing if you two had anything in common or even any chemistry, you decided the most logical thing to do was to exploit the working relationship you had with this dude's mother in order to get closer with her son? Woman, you do realize that kind of plotting is completely unnecessary, right? If you're nice to them, show them a minimum amount of genuine interest and don't play overtly elaborate mind games with them, odds are you'll probably get a date and then some. But considering your first inclination was to come up with a plot that would leave most coyotes scratching their heads in confusion, I am confident in making the assumption that you probably never had a healthy relationship a single day in your life. He went to like, I don't know, bring her like a charger or something one day. Mm. He was so fine and we were like this and I'm like, I'm going to the house. I'm gonna eat dinner. I'm gonna be this mom's best friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, of course the son was gonna be there. You know what I mean? And so we was all together and he loved the fact that I was like all over his mama and like kind of like washing the dishes, showing him that I'm wifey, you oh. feel me? Are you sure? Okay, we need to figure out how women started thinking that dishwashing is a quality that men look for in a wife. Where did women get this notion that men don't wash their own plates? Do they just assume that we leave everything stacked up on our kitchen counters for years on end until we get married? Do they think we fantasize about having a wife so we don't have to wash dishes anymore? Because dishwashing isn't a wifey trait. That's what we like to call the bare minimum one needs to be an adult in today's society. It's also not very wifey to emotionally manipulate the mother of a dude you want to bang but I kind of felt like this was obvious but I guess you really are a special case and no I'm not talking about the good kind of special oh she was like in the kitchen with me and I was with her and stuff like that and he was loving it and I was like okay bet I'm gonna ruin his life too man that's just mean that's mean man and it worked out wonderfully uh, we got together really? and everything. What if a guy isn't close with his mom? I guess like the craziest thing I would do to someone to like me would probably find like their weak spots and their weaknesses and kind of like snatch them by the legs and be like, I got you. <laughs> Lady, you're scaring us. <laughs> Well, that's nice. So how is that relationship working out, by the way? Oh, what's that? Once he found out that you were a narcissistic thought, he broke up with you? The devil, you say? It's funny. It's almost as if most men kind of get turned off to the idea of dating an emotionally abusive harlot. Combine that with your nose ring, nails so long that they carry infectious bacteria, and the fact that you sell your crusty innards online for five bucks a month, and you've all but squandered any chance of being able to have a stable relationship in life. Because no self-respecting man wants to be with a woman whose bland is stretched out beyond all recognition and has breath that reeks of boxed wine. Oh! And that's gonna do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. As always, if you find that my particular brand of comedy is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell so we can give the good old-fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for checking out the new video, and until next time, peace out, homies.